approaching uh, lunar sunrise. And uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. And the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. Planet Earth spinning silently through space. We, we celebrate, celebrate your, your beauty and your grace, your, your special, special place in our solar system. system. Planet Earth gleaming green and blue. We, we rejoice, rejoice in, in your ocean currents as they dance and swirl with hope. Planet Earth pulsing with life. We join in praise with all your fauna and flora as they sing their songs to the Lord. Planet Earth, enveloped in the breath of God, we bless all your creatures this day with the life-giving breath of God. Planet Earth, our precious, respect-worthy home, we celebrate with all your children God's presence in our planet home. Spin, planet Earth, spin. Sing, planet Earth, sing. We name each from our own homes creatures or parts of planet Earth that we particularly treasure. Mountains. Peacocks. Pigs. Elephants. Cows. The sun. Belted galloways. Violets. Rocks. Blossoming trees. We invite them to join us in praising our Creator. We celebrate the song of our planet. Sing, sing planet, planet Earth, Earth sing. Let the heavens be glad and let Earth rejoice. Welcome to our celebration of Earth Day 2020. This is the 50th year of Earth Day observances. In 1970, it became obvious that 150 years of industrial development had left a growing legacy of serious negative impacts for creation and humans. In January 1969, Senator Gaylord Nelson, along with many others, witnessed the ravage of a massive oil spill in Santa Barbara, California. It inspired Senator Nelson to partner with Pete McCloskey, a Republican congressman, and Dennis Hayes, a young activist, to have a day particularly geared toward college students to raise consciousness about care for the land, water, and air. The educational day soon took hold and came to include all Americans being officially named Earth Day by 1990, Earth Day was observed worldwide, spurring environmental actions and initiatives being taken all year. 
This year, as the 50th anniversary was celebrated on Wednesday, April 22nd, Earth Day President Kathleen Rogers said, We find ourselves today in a world facing global threats that demand a unified global response. For Earth Day 2020, we will build a new generation of environmentalist activists, engaging millions of people worldwide. While Earth Day has to go digital due to the pandemic, our goal remains the same, to mobilize the world to take the most meaningful actions to make a difference. No matter where you are, you can make a difference, and you're not alone because together, we can save the Earth. Today we join the effort by celebrating Earth Day in our two congregations. We are blessed to live in a gorgeous part of God's creation with soaring mountain landscapes and flowing clean brooks. In our desire to celebrate nature and to be mindful of our role to partner in caring for God's creation, we have invited individuals and in both congregations to lift their voices and share images for this service. So thankfully, you'll all be able to see some beautiful mountains once again instead of that great flat land of Indiana. In Andes, the young adults were asked to share music, scripture, prayers, and thoughts that pertain to this special day. In Bovina, three generations of farmers in the Burns family shared their thoughts, as well as Steve Burnett. Due to technology issues, we will read some of what has been shared with us. But we are so thankful for all the time and thought that went in today's service. We have enjoyed preparing this service with so many from our congregations and pray you will find great meaning in it in your homes this day. As always, we send our love and appreciation for each of you and for the gifts of creation that connect all of us. What a blessing to live and rule America where we get to have such direct connection to God's spirit embedded in all of nature. Throughout the service, if you would like to do so, we invite you to hold a symbol of creation that has meaning for you. You can pick anything from nature, perhaps something that is already in your home or a treasure that you find in your own yard just this day. We will use it throughout the service. I've chosen to hold a walnut, what I lovingly call an elephant's nose, as elephants are one of my favorite creatures. Caleb and I love collecting them together. Look at my elephant noses. I've chosen a twig. I like the sound it makes when it snaps and the feel of the bark. And we spent ample time recently picking up sticks and twigs after storms. And now for Earth Day 2020. Celebrating Earth Day is as important as celebrating Christmas or your own birthday because it's a chance to pause and remember the beautiful place that God gave us to live and that we need to take care of. Emma, why is it important to celebrate Earth Day? Because it's what we have, it's what we have, and it's what we live on. We should take care of it. Carson, why is it important to celebrate Earth Day? So we can remember God's creation. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Important to farm for me because if I didn't farm, I would be a cheesecake on two skinny legs. And what brings me hope and joy is that uh, because I farm, I'm not a cheesecake, and um, my wife doesn't laugh at me because I'm not a fatty. Uh, farming does it, nothing scares me about farming except I'm getting old and it's getting harder. The future 
of farming is uh, something that brings food to everybody. And why should others farm so that they're not a cheesecake on two skinny legs? That's about it. Give instruction to a youth about his way. Even when he is old, he turneth not from it. Take your finger and do like this. Okay. Push it down about an inch. That's right. That's good. And now another one. Truly I tell you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. You got job. Good job. Now, you will not believe how tiny carrots are. Oh my goodness, the seed is so tiny. It is. Well, I'm just going to let you look because the wind will blow it away. Look at how tiny. Oh, just tiny little bit. Let me give you just a tiny little bit. I'll Girl. put some tiny little. Look, look how small. Now, put your hand out. Okay, now then close your hand up in a fist. Hold on, and we're going to come right over here, over here to this other bed. And that's where the carrots are. Let's put them right over here. There's a very good place. Just drop them in. Oh, yes, see, they just, and they hardly go in but a quarter inch. And then you just kind of tap it in. to hold during this service, we invite you to rub it between your fingers. If anyone else is gathered with you for this service, exchange your symbols with each other. Feel its textures. If it has a scent, smell it. Take time to examine it, looking for its nuances. Perhaps toss it between your hands. Listen for the sound it makes. God made this gift of nature. We are blessed to get to delight in it. As you spend time with your symbol of creation, think about or share with the person next to you a special memory that is arising that stirred your spirit or sense of wonder. Perhaps your memory pertains to this particular symbol or is related to another time spent in nature that is now coming to your mind. We invite you to take some time in reflection as Rachel sings for us. We remember planet Earth with wonder. We remember our excitement when we first saw the orb of Earth, the mystery of a living green-blue planet, a fragile speck of stardust made into a magnificent home. We, we remember, remember and rejoice. rejoice. Thank, Thank you, God, God for, the for the privilege of seeing Earth anew as a gift from you. This is the simple truth about farming bovina in the time of pandemic. We don't know much of anything. 
I don't know much about anything. The world is a lurching mystery. It's complex, overwhelming, chokingly odd. We reel through it, striving to be masters of our fate and the captains of our soul. Sometimes we're lucky, sometimes not so much. Likely the world's always been this way. The human condition has always been brutal and deeply chaotic in the ways of war and fear and weirdness flipping the coin. Our corporations, our government, our news agencies traditionally stand in with leadership and structure. Today, the credibility and ethical worth of these institutions are as thin as the internet. We yearn for a leader, a good mother and father who can teach, who are strong and wise, who can stand up to the withering nonsense, a leader who can inspire and conjole, comfort, give purpose. That's why I farm. Farming is that person. It's honest and the social contract is simple. You follow. You follow in the certain truth. You're with a power much greater than yourself. Farming assures that you won't starve or freeze or lack for problems to solve or want for miracles to witness. You give up leisure for labor and out flows a deep, cool river of purpose. Through the pandemic, I continue with the simple truth of farming. It brings us joy to engage in farming and preserve the pristine landscape of bovina. Joy to us is a new calf, a repaired fence, 
a beautiful sunrise, a full hay mow, fresh pasture, a successful steer loading, and the feeling we have after a hard day's work. We work together three generations in order to successfully manage the farm. We depend on each other, help each other, and support each other. Together it makes the work easier, less stressful, and more rewarding. But with farming comes sacrifices, heartache, and turmoil. However, the tough times are outnumbered by the successes and the love of the job. Our family has been stewards of the land since 1802. We are inspired by the generations that came before us that worked so hard to make a living from the land, and it is our hope that the future generations of our family will continue to farm. As we hold our symbols, we remember and confess that we have become alienated from Earth and viewed this planet as disposable, a source of endless resources, a mere stopping place en route to heaven. We love nature, so we hate to admit our impact to harming it. But due to systemic patterns that seem too large to change, due to ease or even efforts at cleanliness, Due to personal laziness, due to a desire to have certain technologies even though we realize they're harm to the environment, we admit that we are not flawless in the ways we care for this planet. Let us pray. God our Creator, as we reflect on the mystery of our planet, guide us to empathize with the groaning of creation around us. We have polluted Earth's waters with toxins. We have turned our greed into global warming. We have helped cause Arctic regions to melt. We have loved progress more than the planet. We have maintained familiar practices that are harmful instead of claiming ways to work, to grow and raise food and resources, to travel, to live that support nature instead of deplete it. We are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. Teach us to sense the presence of God pulsing through earth as a living green blue sanctuary. Teach us to love earth as our home. In the name of Christ, the Word of God, who is the creative impulse in all creation, Amen. Christ hears our confession and offers grace while encouraging us every day to make choices to celebrate our home, Earth, and to revere this planet as God's sanctuary.
Let us affirm our faith together. We believe that God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. We believe Earth is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with our kin. We believe that God became flesh and blood, became a piece of Earth, a human being called Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us, suffered and died for all human beings and for all creation. We believe that the risen Jesus is the Christ at the core of creation, reconciling all things to God, renewing all creation, and filling the cosmos. We believe that the Spirit renews life in creation, groans in empathy with a suffering creation, and waits with us for the rebirth of creation. We believe that with Christ, we will rise, and with Christ, we will celebrate a new creation. nature. Um, who taught me the most about it? It's most definitely my dad. Um, my dad taught me about fishing. My dad used to take me hunting with him and that is probably the highlight of my nature memories is being able to go hunting with my father early in the morning. Well, as early as a six-year-old will go and a seven-year-old will go. <laughs> Um, but us being up in the woods with him and walking around and him pointing out different tracks of animals, that's probably my best memory and that's probably who taught me to love nature the most. Lift our gifts to God and thanks for the gifts of creation. We invite you to give your gifts to Bovina at P.O. Box 63 and Andes at P.O. Box 299. As we lift our gifts of thanks to God, let us sing together praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, through your love, you have given us these gifts to share. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks and our concern for those in need, including our fellow creatures on planet Earth. With all creation, we bless our Creator. Amen. Christ calls you to be his disciples in the world, to serve him with love and compassion, to serve the earth by caring for creation. Hold again your nature symbol in your hands. Remember, 
Remember to celebrate our planet home. Remember to groan with all creation. Groan until we are inspired to act. Will you care for creation? For elephant noses, the trees that grow elephant noses, twigs, stones, water? May the Spirit of God who is above all and through all fill you with the knowledge of God's presence in earth and the pulsing of Christ within you. Be filled with peace, serving Christ and loving earth. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.